What's up, everyone? MCI ADP Studios. Thank you so much for checking out today's podcast. Today, I got a very special guest. It's actually our first time meeting today, um, but we've kind of been talking on social media. Social media is kind of a weird beast, you know, because you can make relationships with people and never meet them in real life, or sometimes you do, you know. So Garrett and I have actually been talking for a while. So um, I've really admired your work, seen a lot of the stuff you did. Uh, have done and then this episode of the podcast basically this is the first time we've ever had a tattoo artist on the show so oh, really? yeah That's so cool. you're, you're our first one and i like just talking to all kinds of creators and people right. that inspire me you know and your work your work ethic's awesome man so and your work on top of that you work at a beast of a shop right now which is the entity tattoo studio right yes, that's, that's right what, yeah on apple yep right yeah. on apple avenue so we'll get into all that so for people that don't really know you or kind of new, why don't you just give us a little backstory about you and kind of how you got started in, you know, getting involved in art and tattooing and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was always uh, drawn ever since I was little, like uh, probably five or six. I recently started talking to my parents again for a long time, and they were sending me drawings I did when I was, I think, like 10, 11, 12. Uh, and at the time, it's always funny because you – as an artist, I'm sure you're the same. We're like very self critical about, you know, uh, oh, it's not good, it's not good, mm-hmm. it's not good. Yeah. And so they would keep these things over the years that I was like, you know, why are they keeping that? It's, you know, I'm not happy with it or whatever. And then when you look back and you're like, oh, okay, like now that I have a kid who's my son's about to be 14 and he doesn't draw like I do, he does music, which is, oh, okay. So I was talking to you about it yeah, before, yeah. actually. Yeah, but, for sure. um, so uh, looking back now, I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of see why they thought, hey, he should pursue this. He should pursue this because at that age, it was like very good for somebody that age, you know, without any formal training or anything like that. So um, I was always drawn like that. And then I kind of tried to make some money from it in like high school time, but doing portraits of charcoal portraits or things for people it was uh the money that you make from it versus how long it takes to do is just not sustainable in a full-time kind of way yep so uh for i would go sometimes a couple years without drawing end up joining the navy i was in the navy for six years um and then i got out and still was just doing sort of odd jobs and whatnot but um at the time i was actually driving a taxi and I got a tattoo from the shop in Savannah where I was living in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, I, after the tattoo, I just happened to like, I was like, well, I'll just ask, you know, like, what's the apprenticeship thing? Like, do you guys do that or whatever? And so yeah, it happened to be that the guy and his wife had been talking about doing uh, an apprenticeship uh, program or something like that. So that's how I got into it. Um, and then just fell in love with it immediately but struggled with it still like struggled with being able to draw a certain way but not being able to tattoo like that Mm. like and and you know watching somebody else do it and then feel like you're doing exactly what they're doing but it's not looking right it's not coming out the same so um there was times probably over the first like five or six years of my career that i like considered not tattooing full time or mm-hmm. getting out of it, doing something more traditional. Um, I went and got like a computer networking certification and like tried to get a job with that, but having a handful of tattoos didn't really yeah. <laughs> help out uh, right. with the interview process. But, um, and then just sticking with it long enough, things kind of clicked and I started really understanding things a lot more. And, uh, and then it really just kind of took off from there. And now it's like, I could see myself doing other things as far as like just as for, as a, from an interest standpoint, but yeah. uh, as far as like how I make the majority of my money or how I support my family and stuff, it's like I, I can't really see myself doing anything else unless it was like a, a passive income investment type right. of thing or yeah. whatever. But as yeah. far as like going and putting my time in and exchanging it for X amount of money, like tattooing is for sure like all i'd really want to do 
Yeah, that, that's super cool. I like how you said you stuck with it long enough to actually kind of get it. And I think that's where a lot of people stop because yeah. me being a producer or an artist as well, that's always one of those things in the back of your mind, you know, trying to make a money, uh, trying to make a living off your passion. You know, right. sometimes it gets tough and then sometimes it flows together perfectly and then sometimes it keeps a steady income. So that's awesome that you're able to do that, you know, off your art. Yeah, there, it, it, it's very like, like we have an apprentice at the shop mm-hmm. now that Josh is apprenticing and like, I mean, he's on his 17th tattoo or something, but, you know, it, you I see him struggle with, like, that thing where it clicks of, like, oh, am I going to be able to do this, you know? And it's, like, I tell him, it's, like, man, I felt like that in, like, year five and six of my career. So, obviously, early on as well, but, like, I mean, there's times where I would, like, call some, call my wife or call the person I was working with or whatever. I'd be crying. I'd literally be, like, I can't figure this out, man. I don't know. Like, I keep doing this, and it's just not working, and, you know, you just, sometimes you have to take a step back and kind of, like, change your approach or ask yourself, like, why, like, are you doing X, Y, Z just because that's the only way you saw to do it or because that's the best way and just kind of, like, deconstruct everything and go back to basics and just build it back up, but it's hard to, like, for years it was like I felt like I was almost there, Mm -hmm. and so it just it almost makes you want to like, Oh, if I just try a little harder, like I'll, I'll, I'll bridge that gap. I'll bridge that gap. But really the thing that was holding me back from here is like some knowledge way back here that I misunderstood or learned in a, in a, a way that wasn't the best for me to learn it. So, um, but once everything finally clicks, I mean, it's like, man, I wouldn't change it for anything. Do you think that's, um, a little more pressure on you too, just because you are like actually tattooing somebody's skin, you yeah. know? So it's like a real yeah, permanent exactly. thing. Like, Oh fuck man, Garrett yeah. tattooed me today. And it, you know, and, exactly. and they might also be, you know, sometimes it's crazy cause it's also subjective for you. It might just be a little shadow or a little detail. Mm-hmm. You're like, what the fuck, you know? And then for <laughs> somebody else, you're like, Oh, that's the fucking sweetest so, thing yeah, I've yeah, ever yeah, seen yeah, in yeah. my life. Exactly. So, you know, it's kind of like that's as the, an artist, you torture yourself, like you said, you know? Yeah. That's the funny thing is it's like when you're really learning, learning, like when you're still very new, like you'll do tattoos that, you know, they didn't come out like they should have, like, and the client does, you know, they're like, Hey, Mm. can we fit? Can we touch this up? Can we whatever? But the more you push yourself and the, the better you get, it's now it's to the point where like, I'll do a tattoo and like, there'll be probably two or three things that I'm like, I'm not happy with about it. But they're so minute that at this point, anything that, like, I'm not happy with is still way above the threshold of, like, everyone else's expectations. Right. So it's like, yeah, you know, I'll my wife will be going through my phone and say, like, oh, you didn't post this tattoo, you know, whatever. And I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't like that little. She's like, get out of here. You right. know, like, yeah. post it, man. Like, people need to see that. Yeah, so. yeah. It is. Uh, that is the torture <laughs> of being an artist. That yeah. I, I feel that, too. But sometimes I'm just like, fuck it, post it. That's why I try to crank out a beat a day because it makes me make decisions. Yeah. Instead of like fucking just pondering pondering on something right. for a while, you know. So um, tell me a little bit about, uh, I, I know you said you showed some progression as a child through drawings and then you got into it a little bit. And then you started tattooing because they did the apprenticeship. So you started there as an apprentice. And then how many years were you tattooing before you kind of felt like the breakthrough happened? Man, really, like, to be honest, in, in a lot of ways, I feel like the breakthrough didn't really happen until I moved to Michigan, like, until 2019. Like, I had been tattooing since 2010, 2011, something okay. like that. Okay, okay. And it's just, you probably can, like, speak on this as well, but it has so much to do with, like, who you're around. Like, mm. the quality of people you're around, the level of how much they want to push themselves or not or just the drive so um you know towards the end of my time in Georgia I you know I felt like I was doing good like I I was always had that self-critical part of an artist but I felt like you know that I was tattooing about how I expected to be and all that um and then when I moved here maybe like I'm trying to remember when it was. It was September. I moved here in uh, October 2019. But sometime during 2020, one of the artists that I follow over in France, his name's uh, 
Thomas Carlier. Just crazy black and gray realism guy. I had been like thinking about doing an in-person seminar, but that involves flying over to France. Mm. It's like a three-day thing. Uh, it's like 2500 just for the seminar, not to mention the airfare. And it's going to be like a $5,000 thing. So one of the biggest like silver linings out of COVID was that he decided to do a seminar online, like okay. virtually. Okay. And it costs like $500. I was like, bet, like no problem at all. Wired the money over. And then he basically the seminar involves him, a bunch of videos separately filmed almost like this, where he talks about his approach and like how he, why he uses what needles and why he uses this and how he composes his pieces and all that. And then, there's a full length eight hour. You just watch every second of him tattooing. And that was probably the biggest thing in my progression was uh, there's a bunch of technical stuff about tattooing involved in it. But basically, he tattoos with the machine very slow. And so most tattoo artists that I've worked with or, and even still work with, they'll run it around eight, nine volts, 10 volts. And he runs his on five. And what that translates to is just the needle going in and out is a lot slower and more deliberate. And so you can almost see every time the needle's hitting the skin and exactly what marks it's making. Mm. Whereas when it's running fast, if you're not really understanding everything that's happening, it's easy to like do what you think you're supposed to do. And then you wipe it and it doesn't look, you're like, man, what's going on? You know, right. but when you slow it down, you can actually see exactly what's going on. And, uh, so probably within a few weeks of that seminar, I started noticing like huge differences in my tattoos of like, as far as like the, the standard I held myself to and coming close to like reaching that. Uh, and so that was, uh, probably the biggest thing in my progression was that. And then just working with like Josh Tardani, uh, owns entity, uh, Lauren Young, I mean, like easily the two best tattoo artists I've they're, ever worked with. They're beasts, man. So really good there. Coming from uh, Georgia, like even 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 though, well, I don't want to say anything bad, but every shop I worked at before was very much like the owners. The owner of the shop itself didn't even care too much about tattooing. Mm. He was more like a just trying to get that money. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. And then. Um, the last shop I worked at, which is considered like if you if you were to go to Savannah, Georgia and just ask a hundred people on the street, they would say Black Orchid is like the shop to go to. And that's where I was working at. Very well known shop. They win shop of the year in Connect Savannah, whatever magazine every year. But it's uh it was very much ran like a business business. It didn't it was very micromanagey, so just the environment wasn't real conducive to being motivated in that way yeah. and then all the artists that worked there at the time it just there was just more of this vibe of like we're here to do a job but hey what are we doing after we close oh like, what right. bar are we going yeah, to so more and, of a nine to five type yeah thing. yeah and they would always they would always go out to to the bars to the whatever live music's going on which is cool but i was the only one that just went straight home and you know i just really didn't care about all that stuff and yeah I'm going home trying to figure out how to tattoo better. And they're, you know, half the time feel like they don't even want to tattoo. So yeah. um, when I came here, just working with Josh and Lauren uh, is like, they're the best. They're they're just tangibly better than any artist I worked with. And also just better people. Like, yeah. like Josh is a great dude. He gave you the shirt off his back. Lauren's like super humble. Like yep. I'm always trying to gas her up. Just, yeah. just because she's so like, oh no, it's you know, and yeah. I'm like, no, seriously, like you're amazing. Like yeah. you need to embrace that, and like, you know, I know she's not on the same length of you know wanting to be known like a lot of us are, but uh, like she's right up there skills wise. So just being around better people and uh, better environment, and just the town here, like honestly, I feel like Muskegon, you know. Uh, in the surrounding area, like West Michigan pretty much yeah. is a lot more like appreciative of like 
high level tattooing okay. rather than okay. Savannah was still a very big and I was there for 10 years but my whole tattoo career was Savannah before I came here and Savannah is still very big in like the like the old school tattooing like oh, okay. walk in pick something off the wall oh, flash kind of, yeah exactly and so, yeah. and and there's almost like an anti realism sentiment mm. like among the shops around there yeah. like it's I don't know where it comes from, but it just, it always felt like, which was cool for me because I would get all the business that people who wanted realism, but yeah. in a way it kind of gets lonely just being the only one who cares about, I'm the only one who's like, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. Right. And then people are like, ah, whatever, like, what are we ordering from a breeds? You right. know, like, yeah. I don't care about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Well, I think you said two really important things in there that I can also, uh, relate to and i believe people can relate to you know we kind of talked about how there was times when you thought you were going to quit but you stuck with it and you constantly got better and constantly grinded it out so i think that's really important because a lot of people like get to that point you know and you also said you uh we're doing it for a long time so that's important too because a lot of people want this instant gratification of like making their dreams come mm -hmm. true and if it doesn't happen in six to eight months they're like oh this shit don't work or i'm not good enough or whatever and right. you saying you've tattooed since basically 2010 you know same thing with the production thing for me i've made beats for a long time but i've only been taking it really serious since like 2017 like right. as far as like trying to get better you know and then i myself like you sought out the knowledge and the information to try to not only get better but to be able to market myself correctly and right. all those kind of things so you buying that course i think is a, a lesson people should take away from hey man you got to invest in your craft sometimes even if it's uh learning right. you know that that's besides buying all, probably all your gear your tattoo mm -hmm. machines and you exactly. know all those kind of things and the same same thing when it goes with music you know investing in yourself and your career learning how to do it getting lessons those kind of things those are all important steps you know so. yeah putting money into you know not just the 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 parts you have to put money into but also the educational parts and like sometimes i feel like when i know when i look at a lot of artists not just tattoo but other just i do everything the one of the things i notice is like it's easy for an artist sometimes to have that mindset like I know everything or mm. I don't need to like why am I going to pay somebody I'm already you know at the time you know I was making better money than I ever had and it's easy to convince yourself like well you know people are paying people are showing up people right. are but you just have higher goals for yourself and it's like you have to be humble and say you know as much as people tell me all the time like whether it's social media comments or in person when I see them or they're like, Oh, I love your work and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm the first person to whip out my phone and say, look at these 10 guys I follow overseas that yeah. like, that I honestly don't even want to show you because right. <laughs> now you're going to be like, can I get that yeah. deposit back? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so That's awesome. But you, yeah, you have to be humble and like, like you have to, it's like a balance between, cause my wife will tell me this, like, she'll see me be hard on myself and so it's like a a balance between like patting yourself on the back in a way of like okay i've come this far that's cool but never getting to where it's like oh i'm good i don't yeah i don't have to learn anything else i'm i'm just uh i can just coast now and just be complacent and yeah complacency is a killer for sure man yeah so yeah that never that's you know one thing that uh, i didn't really know about you i just seen your work and thought it was awesome but just to hear that that's even more inspiring for me just to know that that is really the path you know a lot of people mm -hmm. think it's a shortcut and it's really not it's a lot of a lot of investment of time a lot of investment of energy a lot of hitting those walls saying oh man i don't fucking know yeah. about this you yeah, know yeah so it's so frustrating. Yeah. It can be, it can be. And then, and there's also like, I only, I can only speak to the tattoo part of it, but with the complacency thing, I've seen artists where you see them here and then a couple years later, you're like, oh, and then you don't follow them for a while or something happened. And then three years later, you come across their page again and it's like, they took a step back. Oh, like it's like, yeah. I don't understand how you could, <laughs> how that happens. But the only thing I can think of is like, the complacency or yeah. like the i'm not preparing as much for my appointments yeah. or 
I'm so caught up in being sponsored or being whatever that like I lost sight of the part that like got me where I'm at yeah. or something like that. So, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Um, tell me a little bit about your process. So you, you draw everything by hand. You, I know you and I had talked before on messenger, but I'm just kind of laying this out there so people can understand. Um, <clears throat> you said you used to draw, but now you say you do most of your stuff, just kind of uh, piece together in Photoshop. Photoshop. Type thing, Cause yeah, that, exactly. that kind of helps with the realism aspect of it and piecing things together. Yeah, exactly. Um, so how does that correlate? Uh, what does your process look like then? So basically, like, um, it's changed over the years, but where I'm at now, what works best with realism is uh, taking at least one photo, but usually a few photos if I'm composing, like, a larger scale sleeve or something like that. And um, you I basically, the the bulk of the work, I would say, is in, like, uh, like image research, like finding there's not just Google, there's a, there's a Russian Google. It's called Yandex. If you ever go on Yandex.com, it's just like Google, but they have a lot better photos typically, which is weird. But um, so it's a lot of photo research. And then uh, like an ideal, like an average appointment would be somebody reaches out to me, says, I want to get a sleeve, gives me the basic ideas if something's way too specific, I tend to kind of stay away because it's the more specific they are in their, well, I want it to be here and I want this to be here and I want that to be there. Yeah. It kind of takes the freedom out of it for me, okay. like the enjoyment. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, uh, and I just feel like it just doesn't come out as good. Like that's part partially it's a, it's a me thing, but it's also like, hey, you know, you're going to be walking around with my work on you. And if I feel like, trying to fit into your constraints is sacrificing the overall quality, then I typically just won't take that appointment on or whatever. But the ones that do go through is, hey, I want a sleeve. I want this. I want that. I get some pictures of that body part, and then I upload that in Photoshop. And then whatever the subject matter is, I just go through and find as many images as I think could work for what I'm doing. And then I'll literally just mock it up on their arm in Photoshop, um, and then just play with the lighting, play with everything to to make two images that were completely not from each other work together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'll send that to them, uh, you know, get some feedback, see what they think. Uh, typically, like a week before, and then uh, you know, nine times out of ten, they're like, "I love it," but sometimes there'll be a few things that have to change, but. Overall, you know, by the time we get to the appointment, they know what it looks like. They know right. kind of what we're going for and all that. Um, but I very rarely, <clears throat> it's funny because as much as I can draw, like people think I can draw, which I can in a sense, but I, I can replicate. So mm. uh, when you see tattoos I've done or pictures that I draw of whoever, celebrity, a musician, whatever, right. it's it's purely replicating. So okay. it's not, I can't draw out of my head. It's one of my biggest, like, I would say downsides or things that, I don't even necessarily have a downside, but it's one thing I respect about people who can, mm. who can, like, yeah. just think in their head, I want to draw a dragon with a thing coming out of its head and he's holding a th orb or something and it's yeah. glowing right. and they just sketch that out and refine it. Um, I've just, ever since I was little, everything was replicating. So my first five or six years old with a sketchbook and a pencil, it was like, draw this water bottle, draw that microphone, like as it sits right yeah. there, like, like still life realism stuff. Yeah. And then, um, I really didn't even take an art class until like high school. And, but by then I was so ingrained in like the parameters of realism that, even when I would try, like if I sat down right now and tried to draw like a, a an exaggerated, like a Hulk or something where the anatomy is like just way exaggerated, no matter how hard I try, it will always end up being more on the side of like real anatomy than because it's it's like I can't even wrap my head around. It. Okay, yeah. So, um, but then you know, there's artists like Lauren who she basically draws every appointment. Like she'll come in early and. You know, she'll know basically what she's going for, but she's got the little red pencil and 
she's kind of sketching and you know tracing some elements and drawing some in and all that it's it's much more of a like a pure creative process i would say whereas mine is a lot of photo manipulation and and then by the time we get to the tattoo it's just replicate this as as best as you can you know like as realistic as possible so Well, I guess you got to specialize in something, and you got to know who you know, like who's coming to your appointments too. You exactly, know, you know right? Who you're, who you're shooting to get, you know? So, yeah. Uh, shout out to Bobby too. I told him we oh, shout yeah, him yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I think you say his last name Carmine. Carmine. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't yeah. even ask him, but, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Bobby Carmine. We I've known him for a while, and uh, he's a real good dude. But he had messaged me right before this, before you came over, and was. So that you did a killer uh, tattoo today. Yeah. So, hell yeah for the grind. Yeah, he was a, he's a he's a grinder too, man. We talked for probably like half the appointment just about like that mindset and how it's like, you know, I was telling him, you know, it's so I'm only thirty five, but I don't want to make plans for everything's gonna be like this for the next twenty years. Like I'll make this much money, I'll do this, like nothing's gonna change. Five years from now, if I was to, something happens in my hand or, you know, some debilitating thing where I couldn't do this anymore, like, I'm, I don't know what I would do, you know, like, I'm not, I would be working at a factory somewhere or something. So it's like not having that thing to fall back on in a way it kind of drives you, but then it's also like, like, I want to buy a house and just pay it off in five years. I don't want to get myself in a financial situation where... If something were to happen to me tattoo wise and I couldn't do this, I'd be like fucked. You know, yeah. like it would it yep, would be more exactly. like uh so but yeah, the the grind, he he's the same way. Like yeah. and that's how we end up talking about you and I told him I was coming on the podcast. But um his wife was there yeah, his wife was there and she was like she sounds just like my wife from like, Oh, he never takes a day off yeah. and like uh he's um you know, he just works so much and 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 all that and it just it started us talking about like, and we have those same conversations at my house. So yeah, but yeah, he's definitely a grinder, man. It's yeah, good cool people. dude, cool dude for sure. So um, we went through your process a little bit. Uh, you got any standout clients? Some uh, even some that kind of like some pieces that maybe you put together that you you just really really um, them are like your favorite ones, or do every, each one is a progression and getting better? Or do you kind of like them all? Or yeah, you know, like. Is there um, a, or is that more specific to like say you created something and then the client wanted a few changes and then all of a sudden it came out amazing and you're like oh that came out way yeah, better yeah exactly know? exactly so that's one of the things that I one of the pitfalls I find myself falling in sometimes is like I have certain parameters of like what I will and won't tattoo as far as not from like a moral standpoint but just like visually you yeah. know like there's just certain yeah. things that work and certain things that don't and when you're the artist who has like all the experience and all that, it's very easy to look at a client's idea or something and go like, you know, I send it to them and they just say, Oh, I love everything. Is there a way we could change this little part or whatever? And sometimes mentally I'll go, ah, I'll check it out, but there's no way that's going right. to look yeah. good or whatever. Yeah. And then when I get in there and I could do it, I'm like, Oh wow. It's actually, I actually yeah. like it better than, right. yeah. you know, so there's that initial thing of like, it's hard not to take that as like a, hey, I don't like this part of the design. Yeah. And, and artists generally are sort of like thin skinned when it comes to like somebody critiquing their work that isn't an artist themselves. Yeah. But at the same time, like some of my favorite pieces have been where, you know, something that I didn't think would be a good idea, but to do due diligence, I, you know, I, I ran through my process and was like, by the end, when we actually did the tattoo, I was like, man, I'm really glad that I didn't just stonewall and go, right. well, that's not going to work. I'm not yeah. doing that, you know? So, yeah. but, um, as far as, uh, yeah, like all the clients I tattoo now are really awesome. I've, sometimes you get a feel for people and when you have, like when you have a more demand for tattoos than you could really even get to, like if I... I can't tattoo everybody that messages me, so immediately that puts you in this place of sort of handpicking, like, okay, cool, that sounds like a good idea, yeah. and you seem like a decent person. Yeah. Like, that's the other part of it, is, like, sometimes you can tell through people's, 
how they talk and their messages and their emails that it's like, I can tell they're going to be difficult to work yep. with. So even yep. if it's a cool idea, it's also, I'm at that point where it's like, I care also, is this a person that I want to spend, you know, even in one session, seven hours yeah. with, you know, and, right. and a lot of the things now are even bigger than that. It's multiple sessions. So, you know, when I'm agreeing to do a sleeve, it's not just, I agree to do these four sessions for this much money to put this image on your arm. It's also like, do I want to spend 35 hours with this person Yeah. over the next few months or whatever? Yep. So, um, so yeah, because of that, I tend to really vibe pretty well with all my clients. Um, and <clears throat> probably the first piece, uh, the first piece that I did that was like, uh, and I talked to this with my son too, cause he remembers it, but, um, I did the, this Pennywise piece on, uh, this guy, Robert Housley. He's a oh yeah car, car salesman yeah. guy around here. Cool yeah. dude. Um, I did that piece on his like outer leg. And at that time it was like probably the best tattoo I'd ever done. And, but then it comes in the frustration because you go, you see that you can do that but you're still in that final phase of like really figuring things out. So the few tattoos that I did after that, that could have been like in that same type of style, just weren't quite as like crisp, weren't yeah. quite as sharp. I mean, again, it's one of those things where nobody else cares. Like right. nobody else knows, yeah. but me. Your expectations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, but it's one of those things where you're like, oh, and then wait a second. Like, okay. Or, oh, and then another one. And then eventually you start figuring out what the difference is and then it can just be all consistent yeah. after that. And, uh, so, but yeah, he, that was probably one of the first pieces that was very like eye opening of like, man, I'm glad I moved here between, between working with Josh and Lauren, between the seminar, just starting to like understand things better and really start to be able to tattoo the way that I can draw was like the final piece of. And it takes a huge thing off your mind, too. Yeah. Like, when you're trying to learn something, you're trying to figure something out, it's easy to, you know, prior to making those strides, you know, I would tattoo all day, and then I'd go home and watch tattoo videos, and yeah. like, how are they doing that? What are they doing? How are they, like, and I'd change a lot about what needles I'm using, what machines I'm using, how I'm approaching it, you know, changing a lot of things in that drive to, like, unlock the secret, so to speak, um... And, but now that I understand everything, it's easy to, it's all easier to do my tattoo, go home. And then like, it's always kind of, I'm always kind of thinking about tattooing yeah, overall, yeah. but like, sure. it's not the stressful, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care about what's going on right now. Cause I still got to figure this out. Yeah. You know, Just trying to get over the home. Exactly. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could see where that would be. Uh, you know, that's for me too. I've heard a saying before that not all money is good money. You know what I mean? So that's the same thing with like, uh, that's a major reason why I stopped recording almost a lot of people because it's like just people, like if you just start recording people for money or doing things just for money, that could be a terrible time or a bad, mm -hmm. you know, bad experience. And it's just not fun for anybody. I like how you said, uh, you, it's almost like you're, the way I'm seeing it, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you kind of like it when, when you have the artistic control because you're the artist, you're okay with a little bit of feedback, mm -hmm. but then it kind of makes it a collaborative effort. Like, but you're kind of the driving force because you are the artist, you know, nine times out of the 10, you know, you're not right. going to be, I mean, you probably have and will, but I mean, it's not like you tattoo a lot of tattoo artists every day because they have no, so many options, exactly you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So it's same thing with, you know, somebody that doesn't make music or something like that. So exactly. Um, speaking of music, uh, I know I know you're a f you're a big fan of music because you've talked to me a lot about music and yeah. you know that kind of stuff. So yeah. I, where did that stem from? Just from being an artist and just really liking music and uh, uh, I mean it's kind of hard not to like music, but yeah, I, I, I was mean, you know I think the I'm always drawn to I listen to like a lot of diff pretty much growing up I listened to most things other than country. I just never was exposed to it very much and you know some songs here and there but i think mostly growing up i listened to a lot of rap and for me it was like even though a lot of it isn't talking about anything of substance for the for a lot of it just the just the 
the lyrical part, the poet, the poetic part, even if there's not a, a deeper meaning, just the, the ability to put words in a certain way. And, and they just make you go like, Oh shit. Like, is that, he said that. And then, okay. Okay. So, um, I was always drawn to that. And then obviously like, you know, everybody, I don't know everybody, but you're in high school and you're on the bus, you're freestyling with your buddies or on a trip to the football game or whatever. And you're, somebody brings a blank CD with a, you know, bunch of beats on the instrumentals and people, everybody thinks they're, you know, goody mob or whatever. (laughs) But, uh, so I was always kind of drawn to that. Um, and then, uh, I actually was, so I listened to a ton of like J Cole. I listened to a ton of like Lil Wayne. Um, I like the weekend. I like some R and B stuff, but I just think it was always drawn to the, the the artistic part of playing with words like Eminem yeah. at his yeah. in his prime like yeah. just the the be able to being able to bend words or end this sentence without finishing that word because the first half of that sentence will rhyme with the word I'm going to end this bar with yeah. and just that like creative part of it was always like and my son picked it up too as far as being drawn to it because he. Like I, I memorize lyrics. Like my favorite song, not just my favorite songs. Like I, there's probably fifty or sixty Lil Wayne songs that I could say like every line to. Oh yeah. The same thing with J Cole probably. Yeah. Um, and my son, when he was younger, when we figured out he was getting into music, uh, he would have these head like what I'm wearing right now, in the car, and we'd play. He'd have music on a iPad or something. We'd be driving, and we would hear him. But he was maybe four or something and he would know like every word to like this michael jackson song or this whatever and we started realizing like that's when he was drawn to it and he's super i post videos sometimes of his piano but he's super musically inclined and which makes me happy because that's where for a while i wondered like my dad could draw he never pursued it like i did yeah but i've seen enough to know that he could have been me if he tried as right, far as yeah. like i don't know about tattooing but yeah, just yeah. you know understanding realism and shading and stuff like that so um but for years i i wouldn't say pushed but i was like hey cam here's a some drawing stuff or i'm drawing for this you want to draw you want to just never interested in it and i was like all right i'm not gonna push it but eventually we found out that it kind of rooted in him with the music so he like he'll sit there and play piano for hours in his room um and picks it up like so fast and nice. the more he sticks with it the faster he picks it yeah, up yeah. and and i make a huge like <clears throat> effort on my part to verbalize like how i feel about that with him like because even though my parents were supportive of my drawing uh i never felt like they were like very clear about like hey look you're a lot different than most 10 year olds like you should really stick with this you should really stick with this so mm. So my son, like I tell him, me and my wife both, like, you know, you should really stick with this. Yeah. Like you should, you you really have a talent and it's easy for him to kind of, well, I don't know, you know, like you're just my, you're my parents. That's why right. you're saying it yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And, but I tell him, like, I show people all the time at, at, at work, uh, my clients on breaks, I'll show them a clip of him playing piano and they're like, my God, like yeah. that is incredible for how old is he? Like. If I played it and they didn't see it, you know, they would just think it was like an adult playing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. So I make that's an effort totally to cool. like not push him, but be like make him aware that like you really do have a a talent for right. this. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. That must be real cool having a dad that's into those kind of things and and being an artist to be able to encourage you like that because no one's gonna know any better than an artist himself of what kind of struggle right. and the dedication you have to commit. Right. to that instrument or to that craft or whatever it is you know that 10,000 right. hours to make exactly. it good because you know? there's even though we're in different mediums like the underlying there's a lot of underlying things that are the same and yep. it's like frustration with yourself when things aren't going well or when you're not nailing something or just watching him go through those things that I've gone through with drawing and tattooing and being able to see it happen in real time and go okay like I've been through this and I can yeah. give him an antidote about like, you know, how this and this happened to me and 
I didn't draw for two years and um like of from probably like from high school to when I started tattooing there was like gaps of a couple years on multiple occasions where I didn't do anything artistic like I didn't mm-hmm. draw and <clears throat> when I first got with my wife she saw some of my sketchbooks and she was talking to me the way that I talked to my son where she, where she was like what are you doing like I was in the navy at the time doing oh, okay. nuclear engineering yeah. garbage and uh just nothing I was enjoying yeah. and but she saw that I had this talent and you know she would like hey let's get a let's go get a, a booth at the local vendor thing and you could sell your art or you could do commissions or you could do things you know yeah. and I was always I don't know if it was out of self-doubt or just like felt like I didn't have a passion for it at the time but I always kind of like yeah yeah you know like it's not that good it's not whatever yeah, and right you know she didn't want to be too pushy but to be honest, like, I would have gotten a lot further earlier in my career, I think, if I had never stepped away from it that many times or whatever. Yeah. I think uh, I think it's all, everybody's journey's different. It's all part of the process, you know. It's yeah. like, I'm a little bit older, too, and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have known this or did this when I was this age. But, like, I try not to beat myself up too much about that either because, right. you know, like I said, everybody's journey's different. So. It, it, you'll you'll get to where you want to get to. You'll figure it out eventually. You know, like you exactly. Did, so. And and for every, there's an example for everything that's on the other side of it. You know, like there's a a guy in Detroit, Bob Tyrell. He's a tattoo artist. That's when I was first getting into tattooing. He was one of the guys I looked up to the most. I've since found people that are just on another level in the yeah. world, but he didn't start until he was 37. Yeah, like he did a. I don't know what he did, but he started tattooing at 37 and within 10 years, he was like sponsored, traveling the world, doing portraits. Like he was, he's a black and gray portrait guy. Okay. And, uh, and so he, that's his whole identity now. Like in the tattoo industry, if you say, go to any convention and say Bob Tyrell, everybody knows who that is. Yeah. And he didn't pick up a machine until he was two years older than I am right now. So that's, that's awesome. Kind of give yourself some like. Okay. You yeah. Know. Life is long if, if you let it be, you know. Um, so this this is kind of part of the podcast where it's kind of cool because what you say can translate to all mediums. You know, that's why I have pretty much mostly creators on here. But what advice would you give to somebody coming up uh, trying to tattoo? You know, what's well, like one of the biggest gems or maybe a couple gems? And it don't even have to necessarily be tattoo, but like an artist trying to get into their craft, you know, what, what are some foundational steps or some gems that you, you could say, you know, on their journey? Based on my experience now, like my advice would have changed over the years, but like right. where I'm at now, uh, I would be to all artists, like not just tattooing, it would just be fine. Whoever does what you do, uh, whoever you can th- find the best person at that, that you can reasonably get access to in your city, your region or whatever, and just try to reach out and start a dialogue with them. See if you can, like, even if it's just like, Hey, I'll I'll drive to wherever you are and take you out to lunch and I'll pay for it. I just want to pick your brain. I just want to ask you questions or whatever. I'm not trying to like, you know, bother you or nothing like that. But, um, yeah, that, that's probably the biggest thing is just learning from people who are, where you want to be you know yeah. like you can all you want you can think i want to be here but if you're only ever in a 10 by 10 room with yourself you know the the likelihood of that thing sparking or that that aha moment or that light bulb happening is way less than you know just watching that seminar some of the things he explained fit like it fixed things immediately that yeah. i had struggled with for like years and it was almost just watching the video and then the next tattoo I did, it was like, holy shit. Like I had no idea that was causing that much of a problem in my process or mm. whatever. And if I'd have just known that one thing three years ago, I would have been much further ahead. You right. Know? So yeah. um that's would probably be my biggest advice is just reach out and find people that do what you're trying to do on the level you're trying to do it. Even if you have to pay, even if you have to, yeah. you know, schedule time around your life to go do that or whatever. Like, even if it's not convenient, because it, I mean, it really does make all the difference. Um, 
uh, like if I was going to do anything again to try to further my career, it would purely be seminars with artists that are doing things that I don't know how they're doing them. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. do me any good to sit around and watch somebody tattoo a cross and wings that, uh, you know, I already know how to do that. So, or just sitting in my own little world and listening to everyone tell me how great I am or yeah. how great this tattoo is or whatever. It just doesn't, it's not going to make my tattoos. In. We're talking about the, the uh, advice to aspiring oh, artists. Right. And you were basically just saying like, one of the key things that Tony Robbins says and a lot of uh, people that are very successful, you know, reach out to somebody that is 10 steps ahead of you. Or if you can't reach a person that's 10 steps, get to the person that's five steps ahead, right. of, you know, be able to seek out that information. Um, backtracking a little bit. So how did you, you came from Georgia. How did you get the job at Entity then? Like how did that um, all just work through out for you? Social media, like messaging, um, Honestly, it's funny because Josh doesn't remember. So the, it all happened from, I've been thinking about leaving Georgia, period, just because of the hurricanes and the South. Like, we, I've always been in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina pretty much my okay. whole life. And um, I just felt like I wasn't growing as an artist. I kind of was feeling like I needed to be around better artists and just also time for a change. And... Uh, one of the big things in the South is the hurricanes. So pretty much every year around September, October, there's going to be like a week where you have to evacuate. Okay. And we had evacuated from Savannah to Atlanta and the hurricane ended up not hitting, but the way that the shop I was working at handled me being gone, they, when the hurricane didn't hit, they were like, okay, come back. And I was like, well, I already paid for this whole week and I'm not, I mean, I'm going to stay here this whole week and then I'll be back and then, go from there right. and just the way they handled it was very like micromanaging and it just caused problems so that's when i really while we were in atlanta i reached out to places that had uh all over like los, uh, not los angeles uh somewhere in california san santa barbara i think okay santa barbara uh pennsylvania like texas ohio there's a bunch of places that uh, I reached out to that I saw hey I just want to make a change I want to yeah. get out of the south I want to okay. tattoo somewhere yeah. and the entity was one of them Josh honestly doesn't even remember making that post <laughs> like, oh really like I knew oh. of um, Jacob Sheffield who worked there okay um, he was became really well known in the tattoo industry and so I knew that's where he had come from and then uh, Josh kind of confirmed he was like you know oh yeah we just had Jacob here and you know, uh, so we have a spot available. And so somehow I found a post that he had made about, you know, we have a booth available and I checked out his work, Josh's, and um, it was right in line with like realism and what I was trying to, he's color realism, yeah. but still like, yeah. I could just tell from his work that he had that same end goal that I would have just in color versus black and gray. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's real dope, too. For yeah, sure. exactly. And yeah. he's only, he's only a couple years older than me, but he's been tattooing like twice as long. Like he started when he was 19 or something. Oh, okay. So um, I reached out to him. I actually had a job. Uh, not a job. Like I had a, a spot lined up at this shop in Columbus, Ohio. And I had even verbally told the guy, like, yeah, sounds good. You know, everything, all the numbers add up, everything's cool. Um, and then it was like this two week process of really difficult to find anywhere to live in Columbus. Like we couldn't get paid because we're not in the state. Yeah. So getting these rental places to call us back or, you know, it was just a, it just drug on. And it was by that time, Josh called me because I sent the thing to him with my email and my, my portfolio yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it took him a couple of weeks to even get back with me, but luckily I didn't sign any leases or anything in Ohio. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because it just took so long. So when he reached out and he told me, you know, all the all the basics and what the setup was here and all that stuff, and and I was like, dude, that's definitely where I want to go. So luckily I had only really verbally committed. So I called the other guy and said, hey, look, you know, I I kind of changed the plans. I'm going to be going to Michigan. And then, uh, yeah, and then I just came up here with way less money in my pocket than I thought I had. Uh, like, you know, I'm, I had this idea that 
the money I was coming with would last X amount. Yeah. And then I just didn't factor all this other stuff. So it was a bit stressful in the beginning, like the first, I don't know, three or four months. And then started to like get known around here a little bit and start making close to the money I was making in Georgia. And then COVID hit and shut us down for four months. Oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, it was funny because I let one of the biggest things career-wise of why I left uh, Georgia was because I hated it. I hated some external factor affecting my tattoo career as far as having to take time off, like the hurricanes. And then I came up here and we're shut down for four months. Yeah. So, um, but once we came back from that, I mean, everything's been great. Everything's like, some people, you know, there was a bit of people who things happened with their job because of COVID that, you know, they had to postpone appointments and right. stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. at this point, it's that kind of all seems to be done. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't have many people, you know, not being able to finish projects because of COVID related job money stuff. issues and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, so that's a good sign, but yeah. So I had never, when I moved up here, I'd never even set foot in Michigan. I didn't know anybody here. I didn't, have any friends or family my wife lived in i say flint but she says that's wrong but <laughs> when she was real little oh okay. uh she lived here for maybe a year or something as a toddler but other than that no connection or anything like that um so but it's been great man like i the winters haven't been too bad i've only been yeah. here for two winters people tell me they get worse but yeah. So far, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's it's hit or miss, but you know if you can get used to that and you can tough it out, it makes your soul tough. And shovel I'll, driveway and shit. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll trade that like any yeah. day for fucking hurricanes for hurricanes and <laughs> bugs and just shit. like yeah. my god. When yeah. I talk to people now and and I'm like telling them about, hey, look, you know, my front porch in Savannah, it would be like a whole ecosystem. Like just the whole porch is just. Spiders, frogs, moths, oh, mosquitoes. Shit. Like, you literally get in this habit of opening your front door and then closing it right behind you real quick because you're like, something's so going to get in. Oh. I've been here a year and a half. I've seen, like, two spiders. Yeah. I've been bit by, like, one mosquito maybe. Yeah. I'm like, I tell people from home all the time, I'm like, I wouldn't go back there for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. That's awesome. All right, man. So uh, we've talked for a while, and I really appreciate your time, you know. Um, so... What I want to know, kind of what I know, you said you don't make big plans. I see where I'm at in five years, this or whatever. But kind of what's next for you, Garrett? Like, what, um, so what, um, what, what's your plans, man? If if you can lay any, out. I know we talked a little bit before the show, but yeah, you know, I don't know if you can lay any plans out. But what's next for you, and what are your some goals for yourself, if you want to? Um, you know? So I always want to just keep getting better. Um, I do when the opportunity comes up. I want to do more seminars and and continue learning. Um, I'm working on opening a shop right now of my own. Uh, it's still in the early stages. Like I've got a meeting with the city and everything to get the permission for the spot. But um, if everything goes well, it should be like July, August this year. Um, hopefully there's no delays or anything and everything works out with the space that I'm trying to rent. But um, so that's been taking a lot of my time and mental energy. And I've never owned a business before. I've, I've always... I've worked at you know seven or eight shops, but I've always just worked at someone else's shop. So um, there's a whole nother aspect of owning a business and yeah. doing all that. So just trying to do my research and make sure I'm prepared for that and got all my IRS stuff in order and all that. So opening a shop is definitely uh, a big part of what I have going on in the future. Um Any uh, tentative name for that? Are you even thought uh, that far down the road? Ink Haven. Oh, okay. so it'll be in Grand Haven. Oh, so okay. in a way, cool. it's kind of a, a play on Grand Haven, Ink okay. Haven, but then also Haven being like the a safe place, like a um, just sort of it works like a double meaning kind of yeah. thing. So, awesome. um, and I already bought the website, so I can't change it. <laughs> so uh, that's a good reason. Too. Um, uh, so that'll be that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then just seeing more of Michigan. You know, like yeah. it's. I know that's not career related, but, you know, pretty much as soon as I got here, COVID happened. So a lot of the the things I want to do, we still haven't been to UP. 
I want to go up there. I want to. I haven't been to Detroit. I haven't even Chicago. That's Illinois, but still, yeah. just figuring out like seeing the things that are to see around here, and then kind of branch out from there and do more traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's super dope. Um, two things I want to touch on real quick uh, that are backtracking a little bit. There's no structure to what it, it, my conversation. So, right. um, you know, when you're having a client, I bet I bet that's nice for you the way you can kind of pick and choose them. But I bet at the beginning or other things you've seen, especially in some of them other shops you worked in, mm-hmm. probably some of the clients been a pain in the ass. They want a fucking dragon that's doing a backflip over <laughs> a rainbow riding a tricycle with right. a fucking bear and all their family's names in the claws. And you know right. what I mean? Like that type of shit's got to be a headache. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny. Like you deal with it for so long that, when you finally work yourself into a position where you don't have to deal with it, it it almost makes you look back and go, like, how did I deal with that? Right. Like, how, yeah. Like, because now it's nothing to, you know, if somebody, and it's not even, they're not even that crazy. Like, even if somebody just wants a dragon, like, there's a lot of time, like, a dragon isn't a real thing, so there is no photos of it. Yeah. So just something as simple as somebody thinking, well, hey, he did this this tattoo or this line or this whatever, I'm sure you could do a dragon, reach out to me about a dragon. And I have to explain to him like it's, unless I can find a really good, almost photorealistic reference of one, it's not something I would do because then I'm getting into guessing how to make it realistic. Mm, Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Just falling back on my artistic knowledge of like, well, if this is where the light's coming from, this is where the shadow would be. And again, it's one of those things that, I'm sure if I did it, the client would love it. But for me, it would just be like, I know that's not photorealistic. Right. You yeah, know? that makes so, sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people with, you know, they'll they'll take a great idea. Like I've had in the past, somebody's appointment with a, they want a rose on their forearm. Oh, I love your black and gray realism. I want to do a rose. Cool. Deposit, set up show up at the appointment they're like oh but i also want the stem to turn into like five names and you're like i'm not doing that yeah <laughs> like, you're like that's not in the wheelhouse that's not <laughs> yeah. what we talked about <laughs> yeah yeah that that's yeah, that pro- f- that, i'm sure that fucks up realism real quick too when you start adding exactly text and weird shit and that's like the that, that's know? the thing where and i don't know if you deal with this because of working with artists who've worked with other producers or something but there's a lot of there's a big part of the tattoo industry probably like 70 to 80 percent of it just the way shops are ran and the way artists are where that's not crazy like most shops you walk in and they go oh okay like sure am i still making that same money okay but when you start putting your own parameters on like the art part of it sometimes it rubs people the wrong way where they'll think uh you know oh he thinks he's too good for doing names or something like that right. and it's that's not where it's coming from yeah i understand like sometimes people being like well i don't i don't understand why you wouldn't do it right and I, I, but i'll explain that in the email yeah. and all that stuff but um yeah that's probably the biggest people showing up and wanting to change something on the spot and then people you sending the design a lot of artists don't send the design at all and i didn't for a long time because of what i'm about to say but the thing that'll happen is you'll send the design, they'll love it. But in the week that they have it, they show everybody they know. Mm. And then everybody they know has a opinion on like, oh, what if he, what if he did the, like a flame coming from here? And then by the time they show up to the appointment, they're like, I love it. But I have these six ideas that yeah. <laughs> I want to try to do to it. But so for a while, I didn't even send them ahead of time because of that. But then you get into people showing up hey this is what it is and if they don't love it a lot of times the appointment just doesn't happen yeah and so i was like okay now i'll send it but i'll let them know like in my process like what i send you is 95 percent how it's gonna be if there's something small that bothers you about it or something we can change that but you know i don't care what your grandma or your brother your sister your husband thinks about this like this this part is my art yeah, so just sense. being like like respectfully upfront about that and 90 percent of the time people are like okay i get it yeah. every once in a while you'll get somebody that's like oh i don't understand i got a tattoo from such and such last year and they did it and yeah 
Okay. <laughs> you're like, you're, yeah, it's a different beast, a different yeah. monster. And the other thing I wanted to touch on is like, I felt like, uh, you know, you coming up here, you, you did it right though, you know, when you came up here and then like, it was weird because like I said, somehow you and I connected and we kind of had, a, you know, a social media relationship. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I see like, I mean, then my wife gets a tattoo from you, uh, and her friend did. And then like, obviously then I know Housley, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like right. all of a sudden, then all of a sudden we all know all the same people. And I see right. other people like commenting on your shit that are like my friends. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know they were friends. That's kind of wild. Right. You know right. what I mean? So it's just kind of cool how you did that and just yeah. kind of networked your way through people and now it seems like we all kind of know the same people like you've almost exactly. been here for a while so uh, fucking kudos to you on doing it right and getting your name out there and, you know good art speaks for itself so when right. somebody sees your work and sees what you've done of course they're gonna be like holy shit because i know for the longest time i got some tattoos and they're not great and they were done by my buddy and at the time i thought they were great and then i seen some of the shit that people can really do and i'm like oh fuck i need to get my tattoos fixed or something because it's just not even close to the part right. of what i had in my mind right you know right. so seeing your tattoos i'm like holy shit and i like to share a lot of your stuff because it's just like there's not many people i'd want after having that experience to lay a needle on me you know right. you would be one of them uh tardani uh mm -hmm. would be one of them and lauren would be one of them. all the people that work at that shop like them right. were the only and like i do i will say uh that uh ryan sora's you know yeah, who that is. He, he he's fucking pretty damn good too mm -hmm. you know what i mean but i just as far as like the caliber of muskegon tattoos i've seen a lot of fucking fair things out <laughs> right, there right right <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't want to de-edify anybody because no, no. it's all art but at the same time i think some of them get caught up in the flash world and the fucking making mm -hmm. a paycheck world and whereas you approach it more as an artist and i i respect that and hold that to the highest regard you know right there's a lot of people that i've worked with over the years that are more interested in like playing the role of a tattoo artist mm. than than really putting that time and effort into their career. Like it's you get to a certain level, oh, get complacent. Let's start dressing and acting like a tattoo artist and telling get, everyone who will get listen. Some tattoos on my yeah, face yeah. and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually in the middle of. I've been going back and forth for years about getting something on my neck, and uh, and I just told my wife that. Uh, I'm probably going to end up doing it, but it's still hesitant, even though this is clearly like what I'm going to do. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, that I'm probably not going to have to worry about a job in the future kind of mm -hmm. thing. But, um, but yeah, it's, I just want, I've always want to be around people who are more about fuck the image and, and the status and all that stuff. It's just like, how, how good are you doing this? Yeah. Like how good is your craft or whatever? Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's Ryan's really good. Adam Beatty. Uh, he's oh, opening, Adam's there too, though, isn't he? He's opening his own shop, actually. Okay. Uh, I don't. Um, it's, I know Adam from the days of playing music because he used to play music or come to shows and shit. So yeah. we know some of the same people and shit. Yeah. yeah, we were just talking about today. He's opening a shop in North Muskegon. I think. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, he's a really good artist. There's, there's, a, there's a, a few good artists around here, but then there's just like any city, there's a lot of where it just it shows that how seriously they take yeah. it and, yeah. and and there's a, honestly like it's not even to disparage like there's a place for that like there's yeah. as as like elitist as you want to be or whatever there's there's a place for somebody that wants to just get a fifty dollar initial on their wrist or yeah. whatever and it, to do that like sometimes when I turn those tattoos down I explain to people like it's not it's never that I'm like, I'm too good for that or whatever. It's just like, you don't need me to do that. You know, oh, like, yeah, that anybody sense. can yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, just look at portfolios and yeah. whatever, but you don't have to wait three or four months to get two initials on your wrist. You yeah. know, you can, you can get it somewhere else and it'd probably be less expensive than I would be too. And cause... that day probably. Exactly. Right. You know. And, um, that's another thing that going back to what you were saying that I, I try to explain to people is, the like when you're paying my rate or whatever you're not just paying for like how well i can replicate this thing on your skin it's also the 10 years of experience the the like me knowing what will work and what won't yeah. you're not getting an artist who's still trying to figure out like oh let, that'll probably work and then well it didn't really didn't look like i thought it would or yeah you know it's it's 10 years of like 
figuring out the best way to go about this. And, and that's the, another thing is kind of what you were saying about, you know, you had work done and then, but once you saw what tattoos could be, it was a whole different thing. And a lot of people that still come to me or still come to whoever, Josh, Lauren, <clears throat> there's a, there's almost like a cap in their mind when they come up with their own idea of like how cool this could really be. And oh, so they just, yeah. it's limited by their own imagination. Right. So when they come to one of us and we say, oh, cool, we could take that and expand on it and do this and this and this and this, 90% of the time people are like, oh my God, like that's way better than what I thought. Mm. Like, here's what I sent you. I booked the deposit. Here's what you sent me. Holy crap. Like, right. It's not even close. I sent you some silhouettes of a wolf and like some stick trees and then you put this together. I, I wouldn't have even thought that my idea could look like that. Right. So, and that's, that's like an important part of it because a lot of people will work with artists that, you know, we hear third party all the time. Like, Oh, I went to such and such artist, mm-hmm. and this happened. Mm-hmm. And a lot of artists out there are treating things like you tell me exactly what you want. I'm not going to like do anything creative. Right. I just, you send me the images, meet me here at four o'clock and I'll just do it. Right. You know? So, people have this misconception that they have to like come to an artist with their own design. How many people reach out to me and say, I love your work. I want to get a tattoo, but I got to find somebody to design it. Right. (laughs) I'm like emailing them. Like that's my job. Right. That's part of what you're paying for. That's part of the process. So no, I feel that a hundred percent. Like a lot of people like, Oh, you just make a beat in this X amount of time. Why do you charge this much for it? Or why don't you sell me an exclusive beat for this much or whatever? And it's like, Man, it's because I've been making beats for 10 years and I have $20,000 worth of fucking programs and equipment right. sitting in my studio. Yeah, It's not just the two hours it took me to make the beat and right. the quick artwork and to upload to YouTube and my time and shit. I've been working on this shit for a while. You that's, know, that's you're paying the... for the experience and all of the knowledge oh. and know-how and my fucking frustration bouncing my head against the wall because I couldn't figure something out. Now you think it's cool, and I, I appreciate that all the way. Right. But for people to undermine and not want to pay your fee or your hour or, right. you know, just think, oh, fucking, it's easy and free to, free to him. Why should it cost me money or why should I pay that much? I, I totally um, understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah, you know. Un- undercutting, like, artists is one of the things that gets under my skin where it's – and it's not just because it affects me directly. It's also like like undercutting artists or not giving artists that freedom. For me, like it gets under my skin to where like the guy that I did the seminar with, if I was going to go actually get a tattoo from him, I would email him a picture of whatever and say, I don't care. Like do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like because like, that's what I want. Right. So it's like I don't care what your rate is. Like I'm going to pay it. I'm going to tip you on top of that. And... Literally, like, if there's anything you've been wanting to try that you know, even maybe you are kind of like, I don't know if it'll work, knock yourself out. Like, yeah. Like, I would never go to somebody and be like, I want exactly this, and I want it turning into this, and I want it, you know, because of my experience as being on this side of it. And it's not just tattooing, anything. Like, even when I get my hair cut, I'm like, whatever you think looks good. I don't yeah. care. Like, yeah. any, anything where the person doing it has their experience and their artistic ability could make it better or is involved in any way. I always say like, I trust you. Yeah. Like I don't do this for a living. You do. Right. So I'm going to pay you, I'm going to tip you and you know, whatever happens happens, but I know what it's like to be like marginalized or to feel like you can do this, but everyone's trying to like, well, I want you to do it exactly like yeah. this, you know? So, um, and yeah, just undercutting people like that's, I'm really good about replying to everybody through email, even if I'm turning it down yeah. or even if I'm saying this yep. isn't an idea that I think I could really work with. The only people that I never write back is people who they write back and they say, well, I, how much, that, that's a little steep. How about, could we do something for this much? I'll just leave it. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, You're like, I don't know. This ain't a yard <laughs> yeah. sale. I don't fucking negotiate. Right, right. Exactly. You know, I have exactly. my price. If you can't pay it, then I, we have, we don't have budget uh, right. tattooing shit going on. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I totally get but that. But it's not a crazy expectation because of the way that a lot of shops are. Right. Like yeah. there's shops out there that are 
tap out sessions for Take $500 yeah. or, you know, three hours of tattooing for a hundred bucks or it's like, there are places that do deals and specials. And, and yeah. so it's not crazy to think that people have experienced like that, but it's just not, doesn't work for yeah, me. You know, it just, it rose me the wrong yeah. way to where it's like, you know, it just doesn't respect the, the time and effort yeah. that's been put in. Yeah, that makes sense. And that and that's a thing. Like even like some people will hit me up and it's like, Can you make a beat specifically like this or whatever? And I'm like, Do you have an example? Well, it's kinda like this and kinda like that. And it's like, Well, that's a tough fucking thing to do. Like, can you just listen to what I do? And if you like it, can we right. fucking rock? Uh, you know, you want all these really specific things. And it's always hard to meet that expectation because they have something in their mind. And it's always hard for you to translate that into exactly what the fuck they want in their mind. Because sometimes they don't even know in their mind. They say, oh, I want a little dirt type beat. Okay, do you want the one where there's a bunch of guitar in it? Because he's got four beats like that. Right. And then he's got a beat with piano in it. And he's got a pop beat. You know what I mean? It's right. like, you can't just generalize like that either, you know? So exactly. it's it's really hard to meet the that other person's expectations, even though you want to. Right. And, and say, I'm good enough to do that. But like what you have in your mind, you know, and I don't, you know... One thing I've done a so. few times uh, already, and I have ideas of maybe expanding it in the future, but like putting together pieces completely like without a client involved, almost like, like there's on my Facebook, I have a thing that's like available designs and it's like, it started from me putting a piece together that the person, the, the, the lady just wasn't feeling it overall. Yeah. And so she, no hard feelings, whatever, but I just posted it as like, Hey, I have this available. So it's this completely fully fleshed out design and somebody just goes, hey, I want that. And I ended up booking a couple of them like that. So it kind of opened my eyes to like gearing things towards I just create pieces and put them for sale, for sale, you know, as available. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, if you like it, pick it. Yeah. If not, don't or right. whatever. But almost going to where trying to shift the the paradigm of like every tattoo being based on a client's input versus me just being able to sit down and create something that I think would look great as a tattoo regardless of meaning or just visually and then if it speaks to somebody they can reach out and book it um and that way almost immediately there's no back and forth it's yeah. literally just like that's what you I picked want. it yeah. I saw the deposit I'll see you in July or whatever. Yeah. Like it's already, yeah. I don't have to, any, there's no collaboration about it. Yeah. So there's a, a certain draw to that because of it being able to just be my creative, like almost if I was like a painter Yeah. and then, you know, nobody was going to Picasso saying like, Hey, I want this, but can you make the eyes yeah. a little bit, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. like not that I'm yeah. Picasso, but right. I understand exactly what you're you know, saying. You know, just, yeah. um, you know, if there was an oil painter that I, really loved and I wanted a piece of his for my fireplace. Yeah. I wouldn't go to him and say like, I want a little barn on a hill. And a, yeah. I would say, just make me a piece, you know, yeah. like, I love the starry night thing you got yeah. going on here, but well, yeah. it would be cooler if there was like a few clouds or something. There. <laughs> we put like, six I names in yeah. the <laughs> and the coordinates where I got married next to that building. Yeah, my hamster died when I was in 10th <laughs> yeah. grade, and I really want the name right, right in the starry night by yeah. the edge. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> so we got a, a shop hopefully opening in July, man, Ink Haven. That sounds dope, man. I fucking... Uh, I think you deserve all the success, man, and, and being able to talk to you and sit down and meet you has been been a fucking great time. Thank you for your time today. Same same for me, man. Uh, and before we go, uh, give all your social medias and all your information or anything else that you want to say while you're on here, man. You know, any any plugs, um, any shout outs, anything like now's your time, man. If not, just tell us what your social media is, yeah. where to find you and how, how they could book an appointment if they're interested in your tattoos or even see your work for that matter. Right. Right. Um, so my website is, uh, Garrett tattoos.com, um, spelled no spaces or anything, just like my name, Garrett tattoos .com. Uh, it's the same thing on Instagram, uh, at Garrett tattoos. Uh, I don't have Twitter or YouTube or anything. Um, uh, I'm on the entities page as well. Some of my work is on there. Um, and my personal, I have a Facebook business page, but 
man, it, it's so, for some reason, the difference between the personal and the business, the way Facebook does it, it's so hard. Like, it's so janky dealing with the Facebook business page. Yeah, because so, they shut you I, the fuck down because they want you to pay for people to see this yeah, shit. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Like, I'll do it. I'll post something on my personal, and it'll get 150 likes and whatever and 40 comments. And then my, my business one, same tattoo, same time, same everything, 15. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yep, because they so, want you to pay to play, my brother. Yeah, yeah. so, um, but yeah, um, so my my Instagram website, um, entities page, and then I'll be in as the shop process goes on for opening. I'll be making like announcements to you know update people on that. And um, as far as booking an appointment, right now I'm booking for July, uh, like July and August. So probably the appointments that I'm booking now, at some point they will start being done at the shop that I open. So okay. Um, I may have already booked up the rest of my time at Entity, but, um, you know, Grand Haven's not too far away. Yeah. So. No, not at all. So, all right, man, uh, congratulations on all that. I'm glad you came to Michigan and uh, found your way and, and felt like you've made some progress, so that's awesome to hear, too. So, with that being said, everyone, make sure you check out the homie Garrett Gosh. Uh Check him out, man. His work is amazing. If maybe I'll get a couple pieces from you or something, I can flash them on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm trying to make it more streamlined with just one camera so I can try to do more of these, especially with my limited time now that I have. So, but if you send me a couple things, even like that Housley piece or something, I can always mm -hmm. flash it when we're talking about it on there or whatever. So, oh, yeah. Um, Thank you guys so much for checking this podcast out. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can always listen to the audio on all streaming platforms. I'm going to try to have this thing out within the next week. So yeah, you can cool. kind of look yeah. for that. I'll send you some clips and shit too, like, so you can, because um, I like to take little pieces out of it. So with that being said, much love to you guys. Thanks for tuning in and uh, peace.